guys. Here I have this 1887 Victoria. This is a crown on the back here. We got uh, George killing a dragon on a horse. Pretty sweet. And uh, I do really like these, but these are the types of coins that, you know, pull out my collector side rather than my stacker side. And I made a kind of a point in the previous video about that in particular. And the reason why is because like their weights are so variable, their purities are so variable, their condition is so variable that all of these coins have a value that is far removed from just their silver weight content or their silver content. And uh, because of that, it's really weird to keep these as part of your stack. You know, you wouldn't be like adding up the ounces and, and anything like that. So um, I just wanted to show you guys what collection I suppose this is going into. And just know that I'm not considering this as part of my stack. These things take a lot of effort to sell and they take a lot more knowledge to buy and sell these types of things. It's not just watching a spot price change and knowing what the value of the coin is. Um, so yeah, I don't want to overburden myself with that on all of my coins, but I'm willing to do that for fun on maybe 20 or so. So I wanted to show you what else I have in this realm. And I'm gonna throw this thing in a capsule and it's gonna join its little family. So uh, just one sec. All right, so this is the tube that it belongs in. <clears throat> It's full right now, so I'm gonna have to make room. And that means I'm gonna have to find one of these bad boys to sell, because I'm, this is just kind of a living collection. Basically, it gets better and better when I find cooler and cooler pieces. And I don't want to be tied up with more than 20 of these. So that's why I have a tube for these. And I just rotate out the worst coin in here. Uh, with the best coin or with the new coins, you know what I mean? So let's take a look at them This might not you know Sit well with some of you guys uh, a lot of, I know a lot of people here are buy and hold stackers, but like I said, this isn't this, this isn't a stack. This is just a Little coin collection that I've set a limit on for myself. So I'm always a little weary when I buy new ones because I know that now I have to go put in the work and sell a different one. So here are the ones we got, and I'm just gonna kinda show you what what I'm thinking. And uh, yeah, I'm actually pretty proud of the ones that I've accumulated so far. So let's start off here. This one is a Prussian. I like him. You'll see the theme here is I want coins with portraits on them. Funfmark from 1876. Uh, this one has quite a premium, so I'm not going to be trying to sell it. I'm trying to keep the 20 best ones that I have. If you guys see anything in here that you know a little bit about, um, share it with me because I'm not the most educated on these. I just think they're cool. Here is a Louis Philip. <laughs> um, it's a five franc coin from 1832. I love it. I'm not getting rid of this one either. As you can tell, it has the portrait just like these. And uh, that's kind of the criteria for being in this stack or in this collection, in this tube, whatever. Um, here, Vittorio. This is a uh, Italian, 1876, five franc or five lira but it's the same five franc size. I think it's even the same like planchet. But I love it. They have this cross here. Um, reminds me of the Swedish stuff, but they use the franc over there. But this is uh, obviously Italian. So I think I'm gonna keep that one too. Leopold II, Belgian. Five franc from 1870. This one I'm also not, probably not replacing. Wilhelm II. This is Prussian as well. 
Hoof Mark from 1904. So, you guys may be wondering, you know, uh, why are they switching their direction? And uh, with every new monarch, the face points the other direction. They, they switch off. So it has nothing to do with whether they're male or female or where they're from or anything like that. It's just what order were they uh, when they became the monarch. All right, this one is Netherlands. Two and a half Goldan, 1939. This is a pretty low purity. So this is uh, in contention for being replaced. So I'll, uh, I'll put it over here. I'll move the, the keepers over here. It's like a battle. This is a Bolivar. Pretty slick. Not much uh, meat left on the bone here, but it's from 1886. I think it's pretty cool. This is Venezuelan, uh, which is pretty interesting right now, just considering what Venezuela is going through with their monetary crisis. But this one is 90%, uh, so still probably a little bit more valuable than this Gul'dan. But I'll put it over here so I can do more research on it before I choose which one to replace. I don't like these as much. This one's cool. You can tell it's only 36 millimeters though instead of 39. So this is automatically gonna go inside the to be replaced pile. But this one is uh, has a pretty good premium on it. It's quite expensive. And this is French. All right, this is Hungarian, sorry. Super awesome. Yeah, Hungarian. His name is Francois, it doesn't mean it's French. But in the maybe, the maybe to be replaced pile. Let's keep going through the ones I know are gonna be winners. This is a five Sucre from Ecuador. I think he looks like Nigel Thornberry. This is from 1943. Minted by the Banca de Mexico. Super cool, meets all my criteria. It's in the keep pile. Napoleon III, Emperor, five franc as well. 1868, this is keeper for sure. This is Otto. This is a German coin. 1904, I really like this one. Staying over here. Also has a pretty decent premium on that coin too. This one's interesting. I know it has like a colloquially old name. I can't remember what it is though, but it's French. It's another five franc coin from 1850. And it meets my criteria. Although this isn't really a portrait. This is supposed to be like Liberty. And uh, eventually it might get replaced simply because it's not a monarch. But that's just, you know, I'm just trying to have fun with it. This is Latvia. Super cool. These things have a decent premium on them too, but I've seen more of them recently than I have in the past. And this one's not getting replaced. Um, I really like this coin. 1931. Everybody will recognize this one. It's in the intro. This is a uh, Balboa from Panama. I hate this blemish here. It looks like, you know, a punk, uh, the light fireworks or something went off on him. So I will be replacing this coin, but it will be with another Balboa because this is one that I think has to be in this collection. Panama, 90%. Super cool, 1947. Actually made on the same uh, planchets as the American coins. Okay, these ones are all gonna be questionable, I think, so. Yeah, this one is Hildalgo. It's Mexican. Only 72% pure. 1953, I think this one deserves to be in the maybe to be replaced pile, especially because it's not, it's a little too big for this 
I, look, I want these to be um, crown sized, not not bigger. Same, unfortunately, goes with this. This is the 90% version of that coin. This is the Quatimoc, in pretty rough shape, and it's uh it's from Mexico, 1948. Yeah, these two are basically the same coin, except one of them 72%, one of them's 90%. So the Quatimac is definitely the more desirable one, and those can carry quite a premium on them as well. But like I said before, it's not uh, 39 millimeter, um, so it might be replaced. And I don't want to replace these with Peace Dollars or Morgan Dollars or Canadians, um, because I have a full tube of all of those anyway. Uh, this is kind of my mixed, my mixed stuff. This one's a shame because it doesn't have a portrait on it, so it automatically gets disqualified, kind of, from this uh, from this tube I'm trying to make. Um, but this is a one peso from the Philippines. It was uh, minted by the United States on the same planchets as the the silver dollars we have. Same with the Balboa. This is a 1903. So yeah, it says the United States of America on it because we minted it. We actually minted these for them to use, which is pretty interesting. And this is a, a Philippine peso. Um, I'm, this is the to be replaced pile. This one's also kind of sad to get rid of, but it doesn't have a portrait on it. It is a five franc, so it meets the criteria that I, I have set, but it's not a portrait. And uh, yeah, this is Hercules and his stunning guests. Super cool coin. This is kind of an overdone uh, <clears throat> image here. They did it on a 20 franc, 5 franc, and a 10 franc. Um, potentially more than that even, but yeah, interesting. This is a commemorative. This is a CN pesos, 1979, 72% pure. This is the newest coin probably in this whole set or whatever. Um, but I guess it does meet the criteria. It's just, it's a, commemor it's a commemorative, so it's you know, it's not as portraity as like this, you know what I mean? So obviously, one of them meets my criteria more. I want like a, a crown tube, you know, like, or interesting world silver. And I know this thing is interesting, but it's just not, not the best of the best. It's still in my, my collection right now though, you know. All right, and there's this, also a commemorative. I believe, 72% 1972, and it's Mexican as well, super cool, but it's not the best of the best. So basically what I'm looking at is one of my goals, this isn't a 2019 goal, but it's just a goal overall. I don't know if it'll take 10 years to complete or whatnot, but I want uh, basically a living tube uh, that's constantly getting better and better and better uh, to help satisfy like my collector side. Um, and as you can tell, this Victorian crown is uh, definitely better than some of these. Uh, so I'll be replacing one, and then I'll be actively looking for a buyer, basically, for whatever I choose to replace. But it looks like two, four, six, eight, ten. I have 12 that I'm pretty solid on. Uh, the only thing that's going to replace these is a better version of itself. Um, so I'll put those back in the tube. And now I guess I'll select which one this replaces. And I think I know what it is. Um, these all have portraits on them. This one doesn't, this one doesn't. That kind of is a portrait, but it's not really. This one's a little small. Unfortunately, I'll, I'll have to replace this one because it doesn't meet the tube criteria, but it is super cool. So it's gonna stay in there until it finds a better replacement. Um, these are both portraits, so they are good. So these are the two that I'm going to consider replacing. Um, when you look at both of these, the one that has the higher premium is the Philippines Peso. Um, the, the Hercules doesn't really hold that much of a premium. Um, so I'll likely be replacing it, unfortunately. And that, it sounds like, I don't know disappointing or whatever, but I'm used to it. I'll show you ones that I've replaced recently. Um, this was one of the ones I replaced recently. It used to be in this tube, 
but obviously I found a better specimen or whatever. But this is a uh, Olympic Mexican 1968 uh, 25 pesos coin. Uh, it's cool, it's 72%, but it doesn't have that high of a premium. It doesn't belong in this tube. The tube has, has uh, outgrown this coin. And the other one is another Hercules, uh, which I've already chosen to replace with a different coin. I think the Bolivar replaced this one. And this was a 10 francs. So yeah, it looks kind of like the Herculeses are gonna be reunited. And I'll be, uh, I'll be selling these ones. Yeah. So yeah, if you're interested, I guess, uh, let me know. Um, yeah, I don't know. But it's time to pry this sucker out. I guess I'll show you that. I'm sure you've seen these. Ah! I'm sure you've seen these come out before, but they're really hard to get out. And uh, you gotta be careful. But a good trick is to use a knife. Find the edge. There we go, and be very gentle. And then instead of trying to pry it open, just kind of track the knife through this uh, seam. Until you've gone all the way around, don't cut yourself. And then the next trick is to turn the knife upside down. And that'll help you get it a little bit wider. And then at this point, you can just use your fingers and your fingernails won't fall off. So that's a good trick. Just don't cut yourself doing it. Here we got Vic Victoria. She's gonna fit in here pretty nice. Sweet, looking good. Let's get those back in the tube. And yeah, I don't know. That's all I was going to say. So thanks for watching. I just kind of wanted to show you my tube and kind of show you my philosophy on stacking these. I mean, there's so much world silver out there. If I tried to get one of each, I would no longer be a stacker. I would just be in debt. And uh, these are actually quite hard to sell for a price that's reasonable. Um, generally, though, you can get the price you paid back. Um, that's because these have their entire they, they have their own market entirely um, and aren't really reliant on spot price so it's kind of a cool little buffer to uh, spot price changing and stuff like that but yep this is um, yeah no longer in my world silver dollar sized coin stack I need to come up with a better name for it but yep any hoop talk to you guys soon let me know what you think you guys do this? It's all about discipline. See ya.